I put them in a hunting situation. I was never too far from them. They always had a high power for our, our shotgun, and they always had a, a radio to communicate back and forth. And uh, what it was is during the daytime, the very first time before we even knew they were there, my son, all this son complained. I had an, uh, an area there that we've been chasing deer track, deer sir. And um, I went and picked him up about 9, 30, 10 o'clock that morning. He got really aggravated with me. He's only 12 then. He said, Dad, there was something walking behind me. He said, it was two or three of them. Well, it wasn't deer. It was these creatures walking around, you know, just watching it. And then as he got older and we started realizing what was there, then, you know, he knew what was going with him. But uh, and then my youngest son, I mean, he couldn't even hunt for them. They would whistle at him and shoot hit trees and break stuff and hoot at him and I don't know what all. But he would get so aggravated. And then as he got older, uh, uh, they left him alone. I went picked him up one night and there were three of them around. He just whistling as loud as you ever can imagine something whistling. And they didn't whistle until I got to, he said he heard something, and, well, he heard a roar, and about a quarter mile from us at our network gates, he saw something cross. He said, I couldn't tell if it was down on all fours or just kind of stone when it went across that little rock road. He said, the others will whistle a little bit, what we call the bionic bird. And if you've watched our video, uh, we described the leave here. When I got his gun and I, I rifled down and I put it in the truck before he was, he was crawling down out of the tripod, these things went crazy, just whistling, just almost this green whistle. I've never heard it. I mean, you can't imagine how loud that was. But, uh, I mean, that would have to all the time. And uh, so uh, one time he went hunting and, and, and we got him about dark and, and I set him up on a place that I've never been some deer. Uh, I picked him up and he was mad. And, and he told me about this one was clicking at him and then he walked across in a pipeline where he couldn't see it. And then he got in the, the pine ticket and then he clicked at him, was hitting sticks, uh, took a stick, it sounded like he was hitting on trees as he was walking. And um, then he started the bunny bird whistle and I said, well, what'd you do? And he said, well, I whistled back and he quit. And I said, well, maybe that's what you need to start doing now when you hear him. They just want you to know that they're there. Maybe that's what you need to do. And obviously that's what they do. And the same thing here. It's, it's, you're walking to the woods, west, and you're an area of activity. Not which, I don't go to an area that's not a big, I just will not. Um, I used to have them. There was a male down there that would follow me uh, down south of me. And um, every now and then, I guess it was him that would break. One of them would break something. And if you ever look uh, at him, that's the end of the game. But if you don't look, they'll keep following you and they'll break something, get a little bit louder, a little bit louder. Probably one is recognition, like, you know, you're coming here. With all of the talk of missing people, did it ever worry you that your stuff, you know, you guys might be on the way out there? Well, sure. I mean, uh, yeah, and I've, I've thought about that quite often, as a matter of fact. And <clears throat> when I put my kids up to hunt, I never was very far from them. Like I said, they had rifles and radios and shotguns and, and I wasn't really that worried that this would be Gary there. They knew instantly to call me if they heard something or something came around them where they could hear it's too close or see something to give me a call. Um, I mean, back then, years ago, uh, the internet was kind of new as far as Bigfoot was concerned. We didn't have the, uh, uh, the knowledge to you know, of uh, Bigfoot killing people. Did I think that could happen? Yeah. Uh, but did I know it for sure? No. And, um, but, yeah, they, they go to your, I know they'll hurt you. I mean, you get them in the wrong situation at the right time, they will hurt you. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to shoot one or you felt like your life was in danger and you had to shoot one or your kids had to shoot one just being in a bad spot? I used to have a place where I found those first tracks that I would go sit at night. And, um, I assumed it was the big one because I, I already read him off once and walked up to him and off and, and this was a couple of years prior. But uh, he would come to this, uh, come up to me on, I'd be sitting on this, in my pickup, or standing outside my pickup and he would walk up to me in his pine ticket. He was at 12, 15 feet from me. He came up to me one night and he started to, uh, doing all that real deep breathing and sounded aggressive to me growling. And I had my shotgun, which I always carried my shotgun with me, and uh, I jacked around him. Um, um, and it instantly stopped right then. But uh, to be honest with you, if I'd known whether he was down on all fours or, or uh, I might have shot him, I might have shot him. Uh, 
on that. Because I saw him right then, if he would do that to me, then he would do it to my kids. And, and uh, But, I mean, he sounded, he wanted me gone. But he sounded worse than that. It sounded like, just in a, in a moment, I'm going to come out there and grab you and pull your head off. And, and, uh, but my kids have never felt that, that, that I'm aware of, have never been in a situation where they thought that they were endangered. Uh, they've been followed many times. They've been screamed at, and I don't know what all, but, uh, don't have the stench put on. Um, but, I mean, there's been, well, there's been so many times over the years that I can, I mean, I can't tell you about all the occurrences and, and the sightings and so forth that we've had. I mean, it wasn't every day uh, like that. Sometimes it wasn't even uh, every month. But at times it was just a, a regular zoo. Um, I know the first time I'd ever heard them communicating back and forth, I mean, it just completely freaked me out. Um, I couldn't believe it. What did you hear? Was it the gibber? The yeah, child? just the, the gibberish. And what it was, it, it was walking out, went down the bottom to the creek. And they were walking that creek. And, and they were communicating back and forth. And you could, I could tell that there were at least two talking back and forth or communicating back and forth because the different pitch of the sounds of the voice. And uh, I used to use coon urine for uh, uh, a cover scent. 